Okie doke. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for tuning in again. Uh, I'm Jason. Uh, today, I'm going to explain how I uh, trim my wavy landscaped platters. So, um, I'm just going to dive right into it. First off, I have a 24 inch uh, bat on top of the wheel. And then I have two uh, towels laid down here on the bat um, to sort of pad the rim of the platter because the rim of the platter is all wavy and weird, okay? Um, just as in a previous video, this one's a little dry on this side, but we'll see what happens. Uh, in a previous video uh, with, with trimming plates, um, I mentioned how I like to try and line the foot on the bottom of the platter up uh, with somewhere in this transit where it transitions from floor of the platter to the wall of the platter. I like to get it somewhere in that range. Sometimes I'll just kind of eyeball it and then on the back end, I'm just going to scuff it with my thumb just to get a general idea of what's of where that transition is. Um, and then obviously put it down very gingerly on the wheel here. This one might be a bit of a challenge because I did not cover it exactly how I should have. That is amazing that that actually is pretty, pretty much center the first time I put it down. But anyways, um, this side right here is a little dry. It's probably gonna cause some issues. We'll see what happens. Hopefully it works out well, okay? Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna jump right into it, uh, tell you and just gonna explain to you what I'm doing when I'm trimming and kind of what I'm thinking when I'm trimming platters. I'm basically just gonna use these two tools. So another, you know, the larger trimming tool to take away more material at a time and this uh, little triangular situation to do some more of the detail-y things. So, by the way, um, I don't obviously have uh, uh, a GIF and grip that's large enough for this or a bat that's even large enough. I mean, I suppose I could kind of pat it down on there uh, with pads of clay to keep it stuck. What I found in my experience though, the weight of the platter and the friction from the towel is enough to keep this thing in place. So um, let's say hypothetically, this wasn't put pretty, pretty well centered the first time, which is kind of a freak accident. Um, what I would do is just rest my hand on my leg and let my finger try and find the center. And it's very obvious when it's not center, it won't touch your finger, it'll touch your finger. And then you just push the opposite way. So if it's doing this, situation once it touches your finger i stop and then i scooch it off to the side um so again two hands uh, i'm trying to brace my arms on my body to minimize movement and since i'm going to be removing a fair amount of material here at first i kind of just give it the business and not quite floor it because i don't want this thing flying all over the place but i am going pretty fast here. Um, also, that little mark that I made with my thumb is right here. Um, this looks like it's gonna be about right. I might actually come in a little bit further. Uh, in the, If you want to kind of mark where you're gonna put your foot, sometimes I'll just use like a little, like a pin tool or this little wooden pencil shaped object and just create like a general template. And even doing that, I can tell it's too narrow in for my taste. And so I'm probably gonna come out. That might actually mark the inside of the foot. So the foot will sort of sit in this region, somewhere like that. So again, two hands and just letting the tool do the work. I'm not really pushing extremely hard. I'm just kind of giving a little bit of weight to it to take away some of that clay. Just like that, okay? Um, I will be uh, adding a little something at the end of this video, showing you how I wrap these after I trim them. Um, and now that you're hearing that, you can, always, you can already hear that this side is pretty dry, and so it's actually like kicking up more. Um, this one's gonna be, this foot is gonna be a little 
asymmetrical, and that's I'm fine with that because the pot itself is asymmetrical, so that is okay. Um, notice I'm also kind of going with the wonky nature of it because if I try and force it, what I found is sometimes I'll trim right through the, the platter. Just trying to kind of hulk out on it and muscle it out of there. So just taking it slow, trying to even this thing back out a little bit. And then creating this little ridge and coming in, trimming in on it until it pretty much looks right. Um, I don't necessarily have like a a uh, hard sort of ratio or rule that I'm going for as far as, you know, the width of the platter compared to the width of the foot. I'm sure there's probably a magic number out there somewhere. Maybe what I'll do is take a platter that I like as far as like the, you know, the dimensions of it and the look and the feel of it and do a little bit of measurement, tell you what it is and why I like it, blah, blah, blah. But for now, we're just going for it. And again, as I've mentioned in previous videos as well, um, what I like to do is kind of take the whole piece in and not focus on a specific area. So I'm trying to like, you know, focus sort of a wide angle lens in my eyes to focus on the whole piece to hone in on making those relationships between the rim and the foot kind of look right. So I think I've come to about, yeah, I think I've come to about as narrow as I want this foot to be. Um, I'm gonna take a little bit more material off here before I start evening out and smoothing out the sides. And then I'm going to do something with this triangular trimming tool. Actually, let me get this material down just a little bit more. If you hear that squeak, by the way, that means that you're shattering the clay, which is the tool is actually vibrating or bouncing off the clay really quickly. It can look very, very cool if you do that. Um, it's not what I'm going for on this one. So if you hear some of that, and it happens when it's a little too dry, which this one's just a, just a touch too dry on the one side. Um, if you hear that, what I've found to fix it is just slow the wheel down a little bit and apply a little bit more pressure and it'll take that chattering sort of effect off of there. Um, another little trick that I've learned over the years is to tap the piece and try and listen for how thick it is. So, well, here. Hopefully that, that's being picked up on the camera, but there's a little bit of a hollow sound to that. And you hear how flat that is. That's a fun game. Um, hollow means there's not a whole lot of clay that I'm working with there. Flat means there's a, a, a bit more. Uh, that'll just give you, over time, you'll get better at gauging how thick your pieces are when they're upside down without having to pick them up, flip them, feel it, blah, blah, blah. Um, start practicing that. If you, have, if you don't already do that, if you're not even tapping and listening for the thickness, start doing that um, now, I think. It helps. Um, so with this tool, I like to uh, have the option for these platters to either be like centerpieces on a large table or something like that, or like a large serving platter, or... Um, if people want to use it as wall art and hang it up. And so I'm going to carve a little canal here at the foot for a, you know, some like 100 pound, 50 pound wire to go around. So you can actually hang it up on like a, you know, a heavy duty picture frame notch kind of a deal. Um, I will do a video at some point in the future here as well of how I hang my platters. Um, there's, a, there's a bunch of different ways to do this. I know potters that uh, actually cut like a little hole in their feet. 
Now, once I get this foot sort of carved out, I will um, show you what I mean by that. But just trying to get that ridge carved in here to begin with. Um, again, everything is going to shrink. This clay body in particular shrinks um, somewhere in the ballpark of 12 to 15 percent. So that being said, everything I'm doing and then this ridge, this little canal that I'm creating here, I need to make sure that it's wide enough to accommodate a wire even after it shrinks. And after the glaze has added kind of another extra layer. Um, so I'm really pronouncing it and pushing it in quite a bit. And what I'm doing is just kind of using this edge and pushing it in and then moving the tool back and forth to trim clay away from the top and the bottom. So from the actual wall of the platter, and then I'll kind of flip it up a little bit to trim clay away from the foot. So that looks pretty close. Let's see what else. What else am I working with? Sometimes these tools dull out pretty quick and you need some time to sharpen them. Yeah, that's cutting way better. So I'm just taking some of that clay away, creating the canal so we can hang it up later. And since I've taken some clay away there, I want to kind of even that angle back out and just get a nice what I think is a nice clean looking slope. I could probably get a mirror and like kind of maybe do some cool light science with it to invert it so I don't have to sit and tweak myself to try and look at the underneath, you know, the profile of it as though it were upright, but coulda, woulda. Maybe I'll do it someday, we'll see. Um, Another thing too is I am not applying a ton of pressure for a few different reasons. There is nothing underneath supporting this part of the platter while I'm trimming. And that being said, I don't want to apply a ton of pressure downward because it has happened to me in the past where it will just collapse. Um, I also like the look of like a tapered shape, so tapering in. So these feet, I don't do them usually straight up. I kind of taper them in. So all the lines are gradually moving in, kind of all the things that you're seeing. Um, I'll also kind of take little sporadic chunks out to try and make it a little asymmetrical. Okay, next move. So I've got the outside essentially done. For the most part, I'm trying to, you know, remind myself that while you're ahead, it looks decent. Um, next thing I'm going to do is take this triangular rib tool. I'm going to put the corner of it here on the clay, and then I'm just going to move it toward the exterior sort of boundary of the foot until it looks about like it's going to be the right thickness. And then I'm going to push down a little bit and take a little bit of material out just to give myself kind of a guide on where to start. Now, as far as taking clay out of the middle, from this, from experience, I've learned that this sound means that I've got a little bit of clay to work with here in the middle, but not much. Um, I definitely have more over there. And so I'm gonna go for this domed, sort of taking more material away toward the foot and then tapering off from, from the middle here. So uh, my left hand is not only you know, functioning as kind of a support hand for the rib tool, and notice kind of my thumb sitting here in the groove. Everything's kind of working on sort of a, uh, I don't know what you would call this. Throw down in the comments what the heck you would call this whole situation. Um, but I'm also feeling with my left hand that curve. I'm, I'm kind of looking for high spots and trying to figure out, you know, um, where there might be an area that I can afford to take some more clay away. Or if I've got like a... Uh, odd little hump somewhere on the process here. Um, just 
just taking taking my time. I have found myself kind of the uh, uh, subject to rushing these and rushing trimming them, and it never works. I usually they usually get really asymmetrical and all messed up, and then there's one super thin end or something like that. So I'm just trying to take it pretty pretty steady and pretty slow. Um, I am trying to match the depth here on the inside boundary of the foot to the depth here on the outside boundary of the foot. Um, I like my the feet of my pots to almost look like they were placed on the pot. And so I'm using this more fine, narrow piece of the tool, the trimming tool, to get down to that level and then even it out from there without pushing too hard. I'm, I'm putting a fair amount of pressure on this one spot and I don't want to push so hard that I force the clay to, bowl, to kind of bow. So I'm starting from that low spot. I'll do a little bit of it. I'll check it with my fingers. Um, it's also sometimes you're also kind of able to get your eyes level with it and see if like this curve transitioning past the foot looks about right. And that actually does look about right. So I'm going to stop there. If you can see uh, Steve in the window right now, he is my business partner. And he's back in town from doing art shows all over the country. I don't know if you can see him in there, but I may might have to get him to like sign some sort of a release or a waiver or something. So just slowly taking clay away, trying to get that nice transition. And then here. That sound is means it's pretty shallow right there. So if I'm, by the way, putting this entire surface on the clay adds a ton of pressure down. If you're trying to just get a little bit out of there at a time, decrease the, uh, the area that you're trimming. So I just turned it to hit that spot. kind of does a decent job of taking material away. Without totally smashing your piece. And then I just come back through with the wide edge of it and just take those those ridges out that you that I created. There's another little trick that I'll use here in a second to take those ridges out. And then also, this clay uh, that I threw this platter in has a, a fair amount of grit, so larger clay particles. And when you trim, they tend to kind of tear out instead of cut out like the finer particles do. And so there's a little trick to get rid of those. Sometimes the, the grit tear look is nice, um, the way that I plan on glazing these, however, is that's not what I'm going for. So um, I'm going to take that and just kind of refine this foot a little bit, sort of randomly. Just get that sort of, you know, what I think is a nice tapered look. And then this is just a rub, plastic rubber something, little, I guess you would call it kind of like a, uh, you could use it for like spreading mud drywall kind of a thing. Um, I'm just using it to smooth out. I'm using it to smooth out any of those holes that were created from trimming. And then I also like taking kind of hard edges off on these. I like them to be a little bit more soft. All right, I think I'm gonna quit while I'm ahead. It's decent. You can kind of hear floor's pretty, pretty shallow. Foot's uh, the foot I think will support it. 
And then because this is the dry side, I'm going opposite of that to put my little mark in the pot. And again, there's not a, a ton of clay holding this thing up, so I'm not pressing real hard, just kind of rolling it around. And by the way, these burrs of clay, all that jazz, I'm not going to worry about until the very end when it's bone dry. If I try and sit and mess with them, I tend to mess them up. So, and then flip it back upside, back right side up. Get these towels out of the way. And hopefully that gives you sort of an idea of the profile of what's going on here. Um, so, okay, stay tuned. By the way, subscribe, like, comment, yada yada, description. There are um, ways to support the channel if you uh, find value in this content. Stay tuned for one second. We're gonna cut this to the back of the studio where I'm gonna let this dry for the next however many days. Um, I'm gonna show you how I do that. And uh, yeah, I'll see, you in a, I'll see you in a second. Okay, we're back. Um, back of the shop. I have this platter back here on the uh, 24 inch bat. And then what I've got here ready to roll are two clay bags that I've cut down both sides. And I'm just gonna wrap the rims of these because the clay goes from this thick to about that thick to probably about this, a similar thickness for the foot and then back to thin again. These are gonna dry at really different rates. And so what I wanna have happen is uh, the rim's gonna dry way faster than the new clay that I just exposed by trimming. And so what I wanna have happen is I wanna essentially slow down the drying of, and so I'll just kinda lift it up, tuck it. I don't really get too finicky with like taping these and wrapping them, you know, super strictly or strict super strict. Um, I'm just kind of getting a, you know, getting a general moisture seal kind of thing on the rims so that the middle and the new clay that I just exposed can kind of catch up to it. Um, you can probably hear there's a fan going in the background. That's most likely going to be okay if you do this. Um, but this is just a, a little something that I learned uh, that tends to work for me. And then once it kind of all evens out, then I can usually take these off and, uh, and let it all dry together for an extra day on top of that and then fire it. So I'll just put this over my drying rack with the other platter that I did earlier and wait patiently. Um, I've never had success with rushing the drying process of platters. So uh, my recommendation is to not even try it. Uh, but by the way, if any of you have figured it out, put it down in the comments. Let me know because I would love to be able to turn, uh, turn out platters faster uh, and not have to wait like a week. So anyways, I do sincerely appreciate y'all watching per usual. Um, like, subscribe, uh, ways to support the channel down in the description and uh, share these videos if you if you dig them and you think some you know uh, friends whatever your crew other uh, hooligans in your circles might uh, find some value out of these but um, until the next time I appreciate you thank you